Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is by Godot Games, and it is called Human Punishment, Ugh. and it is the black box of the series. It is a human social deduction game in which you're going to be playing as either machines or you're going to be playing as the humans. You could also be playing as outlaws, which are kind of a neutral faction. In the game, the two factions are against each other, and they're trying to destroy each other, and the, human, and the neutrals are trying to do their own thing. There are certain weapons in the game you'll be picking up as well as different companions, are going to have different tech cards, they're going to do different things as well, and your objective is going to be trying to gather the weapons, point them at certain players, and eliminate them. You're going to have a certain amount of lives based on the cards you have in front of you, as well as your main character, and you'll also be able to look at your opponent's face down cards to determine what faction or what loyalty they are on. Your main cards are going to give you certain abilities, and they'll allow you to do certain things, as well as the cards in your hand. Some of them are going to be faction changing cards, and others will also be ability cards that you can go ahead and use. Sometimes you're going to also get different characters that will always be a certain type of uh, class such as maybe let's go ahead and find one the virus here is always a machine and there are other ones that are for humans that are always going to be humans but either way it is a deduction game in which you're trying to eliminate your opposing side that's the basic idea of the game all right let's go ahead and take you down below i will show you what the game comes with and then how to play it so here's the game human punishment and the black box and everything included so we'll go ahead and take the box out of the way here and as you can see you're going to be getting the rules for the game you'll be getting standard size and card size variants of the different weapons and uh, the player aids, as well as you'll be getting different decks of cards. And I get the program cards here, and these are all the different variants of those. You'll also be getting the loyalty cards over here. There's three different types. You get machine, human, and outlaws, and some of them have a times two, which means times two human is two human points, and this is just one human point. Uh, these are additional loyalty cards, and then down here, these are factions. These are all the Kickstarter exclusive stuff, so there's quite a bit of extra exclusive stuff you can get in this box. Over here are the different characters and the different uh, races of each of the characters, whether they be humans, whether they be outlaws, or whether they be machines. But not only that, I did say that there's three different types. There actually is five different types because you could also be the Legion or you could be the uh, Fallen. Now the Fallen is actually going to be able to revive players and have them be Fallen members and the Legion will be able to make different characters in the game close. Everybody close their eyes and different characters in the game will be selected to be chosen as Legion if they're played in the game. But that'll be depending on how many players are in the game. Uh, you can go ahead and leave these laser and rocket launchers face down in the lock position. They can be unlocked during the game and you can go ahead and use them depending on what class is available available, or whether you get a program card that allows you to use it. These three, the pistol, the companion, and this extra rifle here, is going to be uh, added to the game, provided there is enough players involved. You're usually going to want to play with four or more players. Um, and so what you're going to do is you're going to choose two of these randomly, two of these randomly, and one of these randomly. You could also insert these if you wanted to. And then everybody is also going to get two random loyalty cards here and one of these cards here. On your turn, you're going to just pick a first player, and depending on whether or not you are an active player without a weapon or whether you're an active armed player is whether you can do one of the three different actions provided on these cards here. The first thing you could choose to do without a weapon is you can investigate by secretly looking at one of these cards that is face down in front of your opponents to determine their loyalty. And the way you know what their loyalty is is based on whether or not uh, they have more so of one type than another. Of course, there are always exceptions like this always machine character. Regardless of what cards here or what cards here next to them, they're always going to be a machine just like there are also always human players. Let's go ahead and find one like this agent here. So that's the idea of the game. You're going to be switching factions throughout the game potentially. And when you do that, you're going to be on different uh, teams. So you can choose to investigate, which will help you determine that. And you can also choose to equip a pistol, rifle, or companion from the middle of the board, provided it is there, and aim it at a player. The last thing you can choose to do is draw a program card, which is one of these things here. And they do different things. With, and you can play them for free without an action. Uh, this one here says that you can take an extra turn after this one. Uh, they have different ones. Each player discards all programs, then draws one program. They got longer ones. Choose any ID card and reveal it and draw a program. So when uh, you are looking at players' loyalty cards here, if both of them are already revealed, you can go ahead and instead look at their character card, which will tell you a lot. And you're not going to usually be able to look at these cards here. And there are also certain cards in here that will change your loyalty. Let me go ahead and see if I can find one. There's permanent ones that are face up, uh, as well as, uh, well, we can look, actually look at these here. They tell you basically. Uh, this one says it's always, you get loyalty to as a human. This one says loyalty to as an outlaw, loyalty to as uh, a machine. And then you got these two here. You got one over here. It's a permanent. It flips up. It says you may have zero HP and you could only be eliminated by a pistol attack that reduces your HP to zero or lower. Your HP is going to be the value in front of you. On these here, activated virus. All other players can draw a program card. 
guard and take one damage. So obviously you're trying to damage your opponents into death. Uh, if you're an active player, you can go ahead and drop your weapon. You can change the player uh, target, or you can resolve the affected uh, shot and then hit that player. Programs don't cost an action to play. At the end of your turn, you discard down to two programs. So you only have two programs. Um, at the end of every round, what's going to happen is if there's any dead players, they're going to ask, everybody's going to close their eyes and somebody's going to ask, hey, uh, uh, are you a human? Put your thumb up. Are you a machine? Put your thumb up. Are you an outlaw? And if there are no humans left in play, it becomes an every man for themselves. Uh, uh, provided the conditions are met. Otherwise, you're going to actually look at this thing here and it will tell you uh, eliminate all. So the green players here, and you can go ahead and look, there is uh, this one here, which is the Legion. You have to eliminate all non-Legion players. If you're the Fallen, you have to eliminate all non-Fallen players. If you are a human, you eliminate machines and outlaws. And if you are a Legion, or if you are uh, one of these guys here, the uh, outlaws, you have to eliminate every player. And then humans, of course, are going to be eliminated by machines. So depending on the colors, what it's going to tell you how to, to eliminate. They're both front and back, and everybody can see it on all sides it's just a nice player aid just like these cards are aids uh you can you can choose to use the larger ones or the smaller ones i guess it would be based on the how, how how large your table size is and of course playing with any additional stuff as well it's going to keep going around until one of these falling these conditions are met and thusly that specific team will win if the conditions are met provided it doesn't go to this uh, one man for every man for themselves variant and that's the basic idea of the game it's going to go around in circles players are going to try and look at cards and i'll go ahead and show you a, a variant of just one player so you get an idea you'll shuffle all these cards up here divvy out two loyalty cards and of course the factions and in the book it will tell you depending on the number of players uh what weapons are in play what loyalties are in play and what roles are added and uh this these this will get shuffled up this will get shuffled up you'll pick tick two from this take two from this in a four player game five player add one of these guys here so we'll just go ahead and say he's this so you've got your two loyalties on the side you've got your uh, class in the middle here you're also going to start with one of these guys to begin the game with and everybody will get that and it'll continue around the table based on which side you're looking at, whether you're armed or whether you are just an active player. And you're trying to eliminate players based on their roles. That's the idea of the game. In this one here, he is always human regardless of anything else. Um, but if you can go ahead and look here, it'll tell you machine, human, always human. So he would always be a human. Uh, maybe in this case, though, you have two humans, a machine. This one says counts as a machine loyalty, and you can't show this card to other players until the games end. And you can't discard this program because of uh, hand size. So it has to be something else that discards it. So in this case, it would be two machines and two humans. In the case of the tie, a tie a rule book will tell you what you actually are. So they, that, that's the basic idea. You get it, though. Players are going to be looking around to figure out the those questions in the game. So it's a social deduction game with attacking involved in it. All right, so let's come up and I will explain the game a little more and I'll tell you what I think about it. So back up we are to talk a little bit more about human punishment. There's three little caveats I want to mention to make it a little more simple for you guys. When you are playing and you take damage, you're going to simply turn your roll card sideways. If you take two damage, you're out of the game and you are dead. That's how you're going to take damage. And all the different weapons will tell you that. If there's nine or more players, you're going to actually share your loyalty cards with the person next to you. So you're going to get one loyalty card on one side, one loyalty on the other. You'll share this one with the person over here and this one with the person over here. And these two will be considered yours along with your roll and any cards in your hand that might change your loyalty and if you have a tie you actually become an outlaw so if you're tied for a machine two machines and two humans you actually become a neutral player um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the weapons and then we'll get into my review of the game. So here are some of the weapons. You have a rocket launcher and it says when you're aiming, choose two players that are next to each other. Each target reveals one loyalty card and takes one damage. And then you drop this weapon and draw a program when you shoot with this. This one here uh, is a laser. You do not name a target until you shoot. So that can be a secret. Uh, and when you shoot, name a target that player reveals their ID or takes two damage, drop this weapon. So you have to reveal yourself or die. Uh, when uh, taming, choose a player with a rifle. The target player reveals their idea, takes two damage, drop the weapon. And a pistol is a singular damage. Uh, you also have additional pistols and additional rifles when you're playing with more players. And finally, this companion here, it says when aiming, choose a player. The target player reveals one of their loyalty cards or takes a damage. Instead of shooting, you may heal the target player for one HP, drop this weapon, and choose a program. So that can actually be a double-edged sword there, which is pretty cool. The game comes with a ton of these little uh, tech cards here, and you can go ahead and draw draw them on your turn like you would in action and they have a different variation of things they're going to be able to do which is really cool I like that aspect of the game there's also plenty and when I mean plenty I mean plenty of different cards here not only including the two different additional factions the uh, what is it called here the fallen and the legion these guys change the game quite a bit but just in in, in terms of 
humans, all these guys have their own abilities. Let's talk about a couple of them. And most of the time, they're going to be only used when they are revealed. Most of the time, um, there, yeah, that's how it's going to work. But sometimes it'll be different. This one says, at the start of the game, reveal this ID and draw three programs. So it instantly reveals. And it's permanent. Your program size is now four. So you're a human with multiple programs in your hand. A waitress, when revealed, you get to draw two programs and give, an, uh, give them unseen to two other players and choose any player and steal one random program from them. And so on and so forth. So it goes throughout all that. Um, that's pretty sweet. Then you have the more neutral guys. I'll talk about a couple of those. The homeless guy. Uh, it's permanent. All the players cannot draw programs anymore. This effect is apply also applies to you until you're eliminated. You have the light bringer. If any player is getting eliminated, if another player is getting eliminated, you may rejoin the game with one HP and one unrevealed loyalty card. You may share your knowledge about the other players. So when you're out of the game, at the end of every round, people are going to be telling you what they are, what the classes are. And if you come back in the game due to somebody uh, getting eliminated, or about to get, yeah, it was when they're getting eliminated, you can actually share information like, oh, I know, he's a human, he's that, and he's that, and he's that. But that's because loyalties change as cards go around the table. So I think you get a good idea of what the game's kind of about. Now, what's really interesting to me about this game is it feels a little bit like the Total Recall game um, that I don't think got released, unfortunately. But it also feels a little bit like Resistance, and it matches a few other cool little loyalty games. But what changes about this one is the tech cards and their ability to change your loyalty, which people won't know. People will be looking all around the table trying to figure out what people are. And you might think you know what people are, and all of a sudden you don't. I've gotten a couple people upset at this game, so this could be a negative in your, in, in your opinion, uh, where you reveal that you're fully human, you've got your loyalty card, and you've got, you've got your two loyalty cards, which are human, and then you've got your character, which is a human, but secretly in your hand, you actually have a, you actually have two loyalty times two, two machines, which means that you're four versus three, which means you're actually a machine all along, so the humans are helping you out. Um, that can be irritating when you're trying to work with somebody, telling them that you're actually a machine when you're so apparent that you're a human, when secretly you're not and you're a machine. Uh, that has drove my buddy John to, uh, great amounts of rage, but in my opinion, you can use that to your advantage, which is also kind of interesting as well. The different guns provide a different amount of threat that you might be, and will help other players in determining whether or not they want to, to, to try and deal with you or not. If you got a companion, maybe they're thinking you're going to help them, or up oh, suddenly they're, you're actually going to hurt them. Lasers and rocket launchers are definitely more dangerous, and just because you're eliminated from the game doesn't mean the game is necessarily over. That will be based on the conditions being met at the end of every round. So even be in the middle of a round, uh, the conditions might be met, but because the end of the round hasn't come yet, that might still change and the game might continue to progress. That is also interesting, but it could also be a negative. Overall, it's a deduction-based game. If you don't like those type of games, it's probably not the video for you and definitely not the game for you. But if you do like deduction games and you like a little bit of additional aspects to it, you don't mind a little, little lengthier version of the game, and you also don't mind the whole every round people knowing what's going on and people being invited back to the game to play after being eliminated, which I think is kind of a positive in my opinion, but I can see how people would dislike that as well. As well as the fact that there's a ton of different characters, and getting to know them all is going to be quite difficult to do because there's so many, and depending on the number of players in the game is going to change uh, how that works. Uh, as well as, of course, exclusive promos, making uh, additional machines and additional humans being added to the game that provide quite some interesting aspects, like Nemesis here. When revealed, draw five programs for each drawn loyalty, deal one damage to any player, discard all five programs. That can make for a very interesting game-changing moment when those cards get flipped. Overall, I really enjoyed this game. It's also, uh, to be said, there is a, I believe, an expansion and or new variant of the game coming out very shortly on Kickstarter if it's not already out. And I'll actually provide a link in the description to that if you're interested, so you can take a little peek at that as well as maybe picking up this game. Maybe they might work in tandem with each other. I'm not exactly sure. But I saw that game coming out. I really enjoyed this one when we played it. I thought it was really interesting. And I wanted to give you the opportunity to understand more about the newer game coming out, and if not, picking up this one instead, because I definitely think this is a fun little trader aspect game, provided you have enough players. I think you need at least six players to make this game really fun, but it can actually play up to like six, 16 players. It goes from four to 16. So I think the hot spot is probably about six to nine players, but it can do more and I haven't played out past 10, so I couldn't tell you if that gets more engaging. Overall, fun little game though, Human Punishment, uh, the Social Deduction 2.0 Black Box. Do check on Kickstarter if you're interested.